All right. Um, I guess we will start. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Jai, and um, so it's uh, the talk is don't let content hold your website back. Um, and so, if you're wondering if that's how the presentation is going to go, um, and hoping it doesn't, I hope so too. We'll find out. Um, but uh, for public speaking, um, for the longest time, I was very, very afraid um, to speak in the public. Uh, you know, what if I make a mistake? People are judging me. I'm putting myself out there. Um, and, you know, what if the uh, feedback is bad and I'm critiqued? And similar to that um, was my writing. Uh, for the longest time, I was very, very afraid of writing. Uh, my mom used to tell me to, you know, have a journal, if nothing else, just start writing. Um, but I did not used to do it just because I thought I sucked. Um, and it was a matter of, you know, I never knew uh, the, the tools um, as well as, you know, what I would write about and whether it's any good. Um, you know, most likely people have something similar out there. Um, so today um, we'll talk about uh, some of these tools that hopefully will help you uh, write better in case you're afraid of writing. So a little bit about me. Um, I blog for ShopStore, uh, which is a Shopify app development company. Uh, so I talk about shop tips um, as well as um, you know uh, app reviews and, and things like that. Um, I'm a copywriter for Enolo. Enolo is a Toronto-based uh, marketing agency, uh, so graphic and web design. Uh, so I write content for client websites. Um, I am also, uh, I work in communications at TD Asset Management, um, so that's sort of my day job. Um, and I graduated last year uh, with, what does it say here? Professional Writing and uh, Communication um, from University of Toronto's uh, Mississauga campus. It's a program there, a very good program in case uh, anybody's interested. And this is the first time I'm presenting at um, a WordCamp, so bear with me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that wasn't true. I just said that to get the claps. <laughs> no, no, it is true. <laughs> All right. So, um, what are we here for today? So, um, the way humans communicate is telling stories, and online, uh, we tell stories largely through our content. Um, and stories is what determine what the narrative is, um, whether that's uh, your personal narrative, uh, whether that's a brand narrative. Um, it's through stories um, that we connect with people. So, uh, you know, root of those stories is uh, content. And to me, content um, is kind of a big deal. But a lot of times, in my experience, uh, when a client wants a website, you know, we go hire a graphic designer, we go hire um, a web designer, web developer, functionality, uh, and content almost gets uh, left behind to be the last thing. Um, I've had a lot of clients who want to do content on their own. Um, and so content is not given um, as much importance as I think it should be. Uh, so hopefully today, for all of you, you know, in, in terms of whatever you do with WordPress, um, it helps you to develop better content um, or recommend better content. So today we will talk about website content, uh, blogging, and I'll go through a couple of plugins uh, that I personally use and I find uh, those help uh, me craft content better. So first on website content. Um, so one of the key... One of the key things um, that I think about is the less is more uh, philosophy. I see a lot of websites jam-packed with content, with long paragraphs uh, that nobody's really reading. And I'm not sure why you know, they end up there. Um, I, what I find, a lot of times people copy what they do in print marketing and then just slap that on onto the web um, for their website or, or blogs or whatever it is. Um, and there's usually a read more at the bottom, so that's not even the end of it. There's usually a link to go somewhere else, read a full page. So um, people don't like to read long things. If you can accomplish the same thing through a visual, now whether that's 
a screenshot, graphic, uh, infographics, images, um, images of course, but um, icons or a number of things uh, to accomplish the same thing, use it. Um, people would uh, thank you for it. And other things to keep in mind uh, for a website is keep language simple. Um, nobody likes big, uh, big words. You know, it might make you sound smarter, but you don't have to. Um, what you want people to do is understand uh, what your company is about or what your website is about or blog is about. Um, and you want them to not open Wikipedia and then come back to the uh, website to see what you're talking about. The biggest mistake you can make is typo. You can have bad content, have bad copy, no call to action, nothing, don't have typos. A um, few slides back, did anybody notice a typo? Um, what was your, how did you feel when you saw that? Anybody? Who's... <laughs> did anybody think, yeah, this guy doesn't really know what he's doing, it's probably rushed, right? My attention wasn't there to detail. Um, now, you know, I don't have like a, a nice fancy background image or anything like that, it's plain sights, but, a typo kills your credibility faster than anything else, um, in my opinion, uh, when you know, you're trying to portray yourself as a, as a professional website or whatever it is. Um, so one of the things for less content and not bogging people down um, and having good calls to action is the bounce rate. Um, you want people to come on your website, stay on your website, you know, interact with whatever it is you want them to interact with. Uh, if I'm speaking too fast, let me know, I'll slow down. Um, but we're gonna continue uh, at this pace. Um, and bounce rate um, affects your search optimization. So content is the root of search uh, optimization. So SEO or uh, whether people are coming from, you know, social media sites, forums or whatever it is, um, it's your content that determines um, your optimization. Now, a lot of people think more copy helps uh, with the, and, and a lot of keywords thrown in uh, helps. Maybe it does, I'm not a sort of SEO expert, but um, you have to play a balance between uh, user experience and your search experience. Uh, in my opinion, you can accomplish a really good experience both ways uh, with lesser content and cleaner content. It actually takes um, more effort to write less and accomplish the same idea or get across the same idea. So next thing we'll quickly go through is, not quickly actually, this is the big part of the presentation, blogging. Um, and and you know, SEO sort of leads right into blogging. So on your website, um, you can only have so much copy and you can only do so many things. With your blog, you can do whatever you want. Basically each post is a new page for your website. So you can target whatever keywords you want um, and then just focus on those and build a post about that. You want to target a different keyword, have a different post. Uh, blogs are the voice of your brand. Um, so we're talking about stories and narrative, uh, through a blog you can tell your story. Uh, it's the difference between um, watching a TV series versus a movie. So a movie, things have to be rushed, point A to point B. The arc has to be finished within an hour and a half or two hours. Um, whereas series, you have multiple episodes. It's a much longer narrative. So you get to know the characters, you get to know um, the protagonist much, much better. Um, and the same thing is with the blog. Uh, you can accomplish and you can connect with people a lot better uh, having a longer narrative than a shorter one. Um, blogs, you can use your blogs for a number of things. Um, informational blogs, these are just, so for example, ShopStorm. Um, it's just shop tips about Shopify, uh, very focused on Shopify, um, app reviews, and it's basically information about how you can uh, make your Shopify store better. But um, there are a number of other things. You can, depending on what you're using your website for, um, you know, either you have new sales or new products in development or whatever it is, um, you can uh, have blog posts about those. So it's a really nice way uh, to connect with people and keep your customers or visitors updated um, about, or your target audience updated about um, what you're up to. And the last thing is customer forum and interaction. Um, instead of having, I mean, you have WordPress, which is, you know, has the blog built in. You have a whole comment and reply comment and the system built into your website. Start using it. Uh, instead of people posting on Yelp or, or third-party websites, have people come in onto your site um, and give either reviews or, you know, if you want uh, feedback, 
have a post about the feedback, have people comment, and you know it can become a, a forum. Um, in a lot of ways, or in a lot of ways, you can control, uh, control, that's a bad word. Um, you can, uh, um, yeah, direct steer the narrative um, and, and reply to people uh, much quicker, much easier. So that's about, um, okay. So what I want, is that any, everybody has some sort of pen, computer, something on them. Um, what I want you to do is quickly um, think about three things you can use a blog for. So for your websites, if you build client websites, um, just write down three things very, very quickly. Um, and we'll take a, a minute to do that. Okay, so three ideas. Everybody has three ideas? All right, so hold on to those um, and think about them as you go through this conference, as you listen to the number of speakers, you know, talking about a number of different things, um, how you can use your WordPress blog um, for your website. Keep your pens and, and laptops or whatever you're using out because um, we'll do a little bit of an exercise soon. Um, so free writing is writing without, all you're doing is writing without actually thinking about things. Um, and, and we'll get into that, but to know what you're doing wrong or to even just find out what you do um, and what your patterns are when you write, um, you need to actually start doing it. So otherwise, those are things just in your head. You think you can't write you know, a nice long sentence. You think you can't write an interesting you know, ending to a, or close to a sentence, but um, you don't know until you start writing it out. And that's what free writing helps with you're going to continue writing whatever it is, you know, whatever you're thinking about, whatever it is, just start writing um, and we'll do that for a minute. So don't start until I say so. I'm gonna time it. So when every, everybody's sort of ready. Okay, so, and again, rules are you don't stop, no backspacing, no nothing, you just start writing and you don't think about it, you just continue. All right, ready, set, go. So who here wants to share um, their experience and how they felt? Um, anybody who sort of thinks they, are, they suck at writing um, wants to sort of put their hands up instead of me picking on someone? Sure. Yep. I just did exactly what you said to do. And as soon as you said start, I just started. I okay. just kept writing. And then you said stop, and I thought, oh my gosh. I haven't got much down here. I wish I could keep going. <laughs> and and so that's really good. Um, anybody have a different experience than that? Yeah, go ahead. You get to literally express how you feel. Okay. Like, fuck mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Um, and you're just... Yeah, and you just continue and you just start writing. Um, and so, you know, for it seems like both of you, you know, you started and um, it was hard stopping. But anybody have um, trouble in the beginning? And as you went along, it just became much, much easier. And then towards the end, you didn't want to stop. You know, you just thought, all right, again, this can continue. Anybody like that? sort of a, you know, a break in the beginning. Um, and that happens, right? Because um, what happens is eventually you get into your stream of consciousness. Um, the, whatever you're thinking, eventually you start writing about it. Um, it's much harder to start um, for a lot of people. That was my experience. It's much harder for me to start writing something rather than once I'm in it and continue writing. So one good thing about free writing is you get a lot um, onto the uh, onto your paper, right? Um, and then after you're done, you can go back um, and cut down whatever you don't need. What you'll realize is you'll still have a lot of nuggets of really good um, content in there. So if you have trouble writing, um, you know, try doing that uh, often. Uh, casual versus uh, professional, um, you know, do you use uh, abbreviations? Do you use acronyms? Um, or just the tone of the voice, you know, uh, the gentleman over there said, yeah, fuck mistakes. Um, you know, somebody else might not, and, and you, that's perfectly fine. That's your voice uh, if that's what you want for your blog. Um, somebody else might want a much more professional, um, you know, I work at TD. We are very, very, there are a lot of regulations around what you can say, what you can't say. Um, and compliance department has a lot of thoughts about, you know, not making things interesting at all. Um, 
no jargon. Um, and you know, one of the things that happens with uh, people, once you get into an industry, you're so um, immersed in the industry, um, you forget that people are outside, um, people who are outside the industry might not understand what you're talking about. So even something as simple as SEO, uh, I made that assumption, but you know, not everybody in this room might know what SEO stands for. Write it all out. So the first instance you mess, you know, you um, write out uh, a difficult concept or, or any concept uh, that you use an acronym for, abbreviation or whatever it is, write out the, the full um, sort of description and then you can continue doing um, your, like the, the abbreviation. Yes. Uh, that depends on um, the tone you set. Uh, so, you know, uh, again, it, it's a matter of if you're talking about I, so it has to be very clear it's your personal website. If you're writing for a company, um, you use we. Um, and it has to be very clear we means, let's say, Shopstorm, or we means at TD, we think this. Um, so you have to define who the subject is, but once you do that, then you're good. So it's a matter of, you know, depending on the tone of your, uh, your blog. Uh, layout and blogging uh, have uh, a lot of different uh, areas of uh, importance. So have a lot of images, block text, um, you know, text boxes, screenshots, whatever you're doing, you know, um, break it all up. Don't make it all plain text. Uh, bold your, uh, in a paragraph, you know, bold whatever you want people to look at first. And if they're just skimming through, you still want people to see what you, you know, the main points that you're trying to make. Um, links, whenever you have a link to an external website, personally, you know, I like to do is uh, open them in a new window or, or a new tab. Um, no worries. Um, what that does is uh, the, once people see whatever they want to see on that link, um, they can go back to your own website um, and then they don't, they don't have to click the back button because, um, you know, people don't like to do that for some reason. Uh, regularity, have consistency in when you're uh, posting. So whether that's once a week, once a month, uh, every day, um, build that expectation with your audience. Uh, you know, instead of having seven posts in one week, then waiting a month and then another seven, it's much better to, you know, have those seven posts over, you know, whatever period um, you're doing in, in some form of uh, regularity. Length, uh, you don't have to write long blogs. Uh, one of the big things with the, you know, my issue was, oh, I'm not gonna, going to blog is, you know, how am I going to write all that content? Um, have short blogs, that's okay, have short uh, posts um, and you can vary them. Um, I think a uh, recommended minimum is about 300 words, but if you know your purpose is served with a shorter post, go ahead, do it, um, it's your own post. Um, the next thing is a framework. Um, so I'll quickly go through this. Um, this is what helped me, this is sort of what I use uh, for my personal when I'm blogging. Um, have three key points um, to what you're tr trying to blog about. Um, once you have those points, write an introduction, write a summary, which is basically repeating um, sort of the summarizing of the uh, points and have a call to action. Um, a post is, well, not useless. I guess you can accomplish whatever you want, but having a very clear call to action helps you um, get from your audience what you want them to do. Uh, I, you know, whether, even if it's simply, you know, post in the comments about what you think about this post. Um, have a call to action, let people do something. Um, the other plugin I use is the editorial calendar, um, which you can do to schedule posts. On a month view, you can look at all the posts you have in the future, um, in the uh, past, after you've installed the plugin and activated it. Um, you can do drafts and posts, but you can also schedule them to be posted. So if I want something to be posted, um, and let's just quickly get into it. Um, so once you install it, you'll see under your posts, uh, in the calendar. And what this gives me is sort of a month view of all the things that uh, um, I'm planning on posting. So if I want to create a post here, you'll do a quick edit about new post on. 
and you can set the time for when it needs to be published. So, um, you know, whether you post at 11 o'clock or, or whatever it is, um, you can set the time. And the other thing is the status. So if you're just putting placeholder, um, you'll save it as a draft. But if this is all, if this is all I want to say, um, I can actually just do scheduled. Um, so what I'll do is once we hit 10 a.m. on October 9th, it'll automatically post um, uh, that uh, post. Um, and so in terms of uh, scheduling things and pre-planning things, um, I find this plugin to be really helpful. I use it um, if there are better ones by all means. Sorry, go ahead. What's the name of this plugin? Calendar? Pardon me? What's the name of the plugin? Uh, edit, yep, oh, we'll go back. Editorial Calendar. So that's the uh, name of the uh, plugin. And let's recap. Sorry, you have a question? You, you have to go in and do it. So if you're doing a quick post uh, or a quick edit, uh, you, you, you can't uh, edit Yoast right there. But once you go into a post and you click on edit, like similar to your regular uh, post, Yoast will be at the bottom and you can do your SEO. Yep, question? Um, I'll open it afterwards if that's okay. Uh, it's the calendar view um, is what I find helpful instead of a list uh, view like this is just and the other thing you can move things around um, if I want to quickly move a post from one day to the next I just drag and drop it uh, to a different date yeah. and can you use Yoast on a dot com site or only a dot org uh, not sure yes. yeah sorry any, any site okay oh okay oh any yeah 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 like any, but not a dot WordPress dot com. No, but yes, a dot com in general. Yes. Yes. Whoever knows the answer, yes to them. <laughs> Whatever they're saying, I'm not sure. I haven't tried it on dot com. Uh, oh, you can't. See. You can't put any plugins whatsoever in WordPress dot com. When something is free, you don't get any any real choices. In WordPress dot org is the self hosted. You can put every single plugin that there is out there for WordPress. The site would be a little slow, but yes, it would be still posted. Okay. Quick uh, question? Yeah, it's about the calendar. I mean, it's more than just about a calendar view. It's a, it, it allows you to maybe connect your strategic marketing yep. to like being at WordCamp. You yeah. I want to say, I'm going to know I'm going to be at WordCamp, so let me schedule things that will fire off automatically on social media yep. and create some more strategic approach. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, whatever your uh, use case is, but yeah, definitely. Um, your content strategy. Um, so less is more, uh, start using a blog, you know, whatever it is uh, you're using it for, and then SEO. So here's what I want you to do. Start free writing, one minute per day. A minute is not too long. Um, get into the habit of just writing things, you know, getting things out there. Uh, and you'll be surprised at how much content um, you write. So today we did, uh, you know, just about anything, but you can actually be, okay, you know, Yoast. And specific to that, start writing about searchability, SEO, whatever it is. Um, and then you'll actually come out with um, a lot of good things, most likely. Uh, look at a website you've done um, already, or either your own or a client site, cut content by about 25%, um, and see if you can still accomplish the same amount of uh, effect um, you want without with lower content. Um, and then the three ideas that you had for your blog, uh, within the next month, um, write uh, one post about it. Questions, any other questions? I know we covered a lot of questions um, in here. Yep. I just wanted to ask, uh, one example with the Mona Lisa thing. Like, I understand that the big wall of text is kind of hard for people with, uh, to read and all that, but what do you do in the case of accessibility where somebody's, let's say, blind and they have a screen reader? And you don't want to just put a short alt tag saying Mona Lisa. Uh, yeah, I mean, so again, depends on what your uh, use case is. If so, like you know, um, 
depending on what the purpose is, uh, these are not, you know, these are just things that you can use. These are go into your toolbox. These are not rules that you have to follow um, to get better um, content. So like if, you know, writing out um, is better. And again, I'm not an expert on, you know, accessibility writing. So um, I'm sure there are talks about that uh, at this WordCamp. But yeah, so the, the No worries. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yep. I write for a living for a newspaper, and my editor's a judgmental. Yep. So that guy, he's always making me write. When you write, you know the little voice is the judgmental. Yep. How do you punch it in the face? So you can just write. Uh, well. <laughs> And that's where I think free writing comes in. Um, and especially if you're typing, cover your screen. Don't even look at what you've written before. So one minute is just a start, by the way. Start free writing for longer as you go along, if you're more comfortable with it, uh, as you get more comfortable. But the judgmental will still be there. Um, I think it's just a matter of um, you have to see, are, is your audience served better by you actually writing this versus this information not being out there? Because for eight years, when I met professional, I think that judgmental little voice from my boss uh, still still on my own personal right, on my own blog. So I just need to punch it in the head. Yeah. But, and I think, you know, like I don't, that judgmental voice is in my head too when I write um, every week for a shop storm. Um, and it's just a matter of getting in there. Um, and you hope that your, you know, people are kind. Um, <laughs> any other uh, questions? No. So thank you, everyone. You were all very kind um, and lovely.